Joining us now is a man who, I'll tell you what, might be the most fashionable human I've ever mm -hmm. seen in my entire oh, life. Yeah. Yesterday, or yeah, two days ago, coming off a plane, he was wearing an outfit that might have been the nicest outfit I've ever seen in my life, and also most expensive outfit <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who's been around for a long, long time, one of the greatest tight ends of all time, I think we can say at this point, mm -hmm. sure. from the undefeated, nope, not undefeated, they lost to the Raiders, but oh, you get uh, it, Kansas City, the reigning champions, yeah, hell yeah. Ch hell yeah. Kansas City Chiefs, ladies and gentlemen, Travis Kelsey. Yeah. 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 How are you, man? Hey, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having me on, man. I'm a big fan of the show. I'm just, uh, I'm happy to, to be sitting here talking to the boys, man. No, uh -huh. we are thrilled to have you on here, brother. The goatee is fantastic. You got the hair on the top at this point. I do, oh, yeah. I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. That's like the, uh, I think I saw a pinky ring on you the other day, couple chains. Oh, yeah. You gotta, gotta keep that pinky ring on you, baby. <laughs> Come on, need it. Uh, <laughs> what has this year been like for you, Trav? It looks like you guys are enjoying the hell out of this whole thing, being the target on everybody's minds every single week. Um, I mean, just attacking the day. I mean, we know what we have in the building, and that's a, that's a Super Bowl caliber team. It is what it is, man. We, uh, we, we feel confident with the pieces that we have, uh, as well as the, the new additions that we just got in uh, in two six left bell coming coming through and just uh, coming in with energy energy and, and a whole lot of swagger man and it just it juices everybody you know how swagger is contagious man and uh, and we and we just keep building this beast especially in the middle of the season here we're far enough into the season especially with all these COVID protocols where you can't see the beginning and the light at the end of the tunnel is still very very far away uh, so having a new guy come in with a lot of energy I didn't even think about that potentially being a big benefit in the locker room have you gotten a chance obviously to get to know him yet did you guys know him whenever he came in and what were the immediate thoughts um well I knew him just from uh, just from being all being around the league and playing the Steelers uh, so much um, one of my friends actually played with him at Michigan State, so I ended up uh, kind of having a mutual friendship with him. And uh, as he came here into Kansas City, I mean, it was uh, you could see it in the first walkthrough, man. The guy was excited. He's ready to learn. Uh, there's a lot to learn in this offense uh, because Coach Reed can put you in so many different places. So it's, uh, it's for him to be a professional, just come in ready to learn like a rookie in the building, like a, like a, like a first-year guy, man, just, uh, just excited to be around. Um, a winning football team, man. It's uh, it's definitely been a blessing to see that, and it's refreshing, man. You see, you see, kind of the same guys every single week, and it, and it, and it kind of get caught up in the routine of things. And when you get to get that uh, that little sprinkle of a new magic, man, it's uh, it, it's fun. Yeah, what is that offense that you refer to? Because it feels like Andy Reid. Okay, he goes to a dry race board. And he gets like a blue, a red, a green, whatever it is. And he just, because of how many weapons you guys have, like so all the weapons you guys have so much, so many explosive players. And we'll talk about how the fuck you guys are keeping them all on the team still. We'll talk about that at some <laughs> point, including yourself. Congrats on the new contract. You deserve it. But it feels like he just goes over $100 million earned, by the way, through your NFL Ooh. career. Woo! <laughs> Still got to earn it, baby. Still got to earn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those Louis boots, <laughs> those Louis boots come with. They were comfortable. Yeah. I, they kept my toes warm in the weather out there. I'm not going to lie. Hey, this outfit right here, uh, if we had to guess price on it. <laughs> Oh man, I can't even. I can't even. I, you know, I I can't look at price tags, man. I just go. For <laughs> yeah. That's my boy. Can't hide it. It's one of the nicest outfits I've ever seen in my entire life. Being 100% candid, and then you You're got a big leather pants guy. I love You're it. Leather pants guy. Man. Love it. Love what you got. I would never wear it, but other humans wearing it. I'm a big fan. <laughs> then you have the. Then you have like the 50 cent mask on though. That was the only thing we thought you should have had. Like maybe a. You know what I mean? Like a. Uh, I always screw up with the mask. I don't know what it is. I just take the one that's like closest to me yeah. and usually it's just the box of ones as you're leaving the facility yeah. you know you just grab a blue one you just keep it going i gotta get you're right i do i have to get better with the mask yeah just, just, it always just throws it off yeah this just outfit look at the out i mean this is like an award-winning costume you have on here hopping off the plane <laughs> like greatest costume game day costume of all time and then the mask is like okay all right we can get that mask at uh cvs right down <laughs> here in the street <laughs> but other than that travis wait, thank you for remaining humble with the mask but let's get back to this offense you guys have so many weapons i feel like like Andy Reid just goes to a dry erase board and just starts drawing different routes for everybody. Do you guys have to memorize concepts? Do you have to like what is what goes into that offense? Because it feels like you guys have a never-ending supply of plays. It's almost like a new play can be created on a spot. Oh yeah, 
That's and that's exactly what it is. Uh, um, you'll see a lot of different variations of concepts, um, kind of mix mix matching uh, certain concepts together. Uh, but for the most part, it's uh, it's just it's a new game plan every single week. So you gotta you you really have to lock in uh, Monday through through Saturday on on trying to you know stay in tune with the with w- why we're calling the plays, why we're doing things like this. Because uh, the one thing Coach Reed does unbelievable is he matches he matches up everything. So you'll get you'll get the same formation um, with about five different routes and uh, five different uh, variations of what we're doing within that within uh, that that certain set of formations. Um, and, you know, it just it takes off. It, it puts you what it does for you as a player is it puts you in a position to succeed. It, it makes the guy across from you have to play um, reactionary football. And if you're and if you're on your P's and Q's and you're and you're doing the fundamentals the right way, you're working on your, your stuff throughout the week. Um, you know, what I mean, it, it sets you up to have success on Sundays. And that's why you love Coach Reed and this uh, this offensive uh, scheme. Well, then you guys added in this power game where it's like, we'll ground and pound if we have to with uh, CEH or whatever. It, was oh, that was that something you think that Andy and you guys did a little self-scout on the offense? It was like, hey, we also have to be able to ground and pound this thing out and be able to have that attitude? Or was it just like this Clyde guy is a fucking animal? Like we should think about getting this guy the ball as much as possible? Or does it open up everything else or all things in, that I just said there? It's exactly what you just said. I mean, what it does for, for the offensive linemen, you know what I mean? They can come off the ball and not have to worry about pass setting and, and trading off blocks and stuff like that. They can just come off the ball and maul a dude and create a new line of scrimmage. Um, what that does for them is it puts them in a way easier, way better uh, situation throughout the course of the game when we do have to throw the ball uh, in a two-minute drill or, or, or towards the end of the game when we have to run the ball. You know, it gives them that, 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 that grit, gritty mentality uh, just coming off the ball and mauling dudes, and uh, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to run the ball in the uh, in the NFL. You know what I mean? This game has changed a lot in terms of how much uh, how much we pass, but at the end of the day, uh, you're gonna have to run the get, run the ball to win a football game, and uh, and getting that going is is always you know what I mean is always key. I haven't been paying attention enough. Are you out there throwing your body around? You big blocking tight end right now? I got to man. I got hey! to. Hey! This is this is a team game, man. I'm out here. We got we got goons in the back. Guys, they can take it to the house. So how can you not get excited about about blocking uh, for the guys in the backfield um, and just trying to be a more accountable football player altogether? You know what I mean? Being open for Pat uh, when another guy gets a, gets a pass or catches a pass. You know what I mean? Trying to find an extra body uh, and just just. Just trying to always, you know, be there for my teammates, man. I think, uh, I think over the course of my career, I haven't shown enough of that. And, uh, and this year, without a doubt, I'm definitely trying to throw my body around a little bit more and show everybody I'm a complete football player, man. How much does winning a Super Bowl change everything? Like workouts, like, does it change any? Like the, the knowledge that your team can win it is one that is very powerful to have. I think going into workouts, is it that big of a change and a factor? You think after winning it, it's like, we've got a chance to taste it. Now let's do it again. Oh yeah, for sure. And it was always, I mean, I'm, for my seven years here, we were kind of the, the little brother to a lot of teams in the AFC. Uh, and I hate to say that it, it burns me to say that, but uh, it is what it is. And we just couldn't get over the hump. And then we got this guy, Patty Mahomes. <laughs> and all of a sudden we became the favorites. And uh, every, everybody expects us to be great on every single on every single play. And uh, winning the Super Bowl, that just it, it boosts your level of confidence. I mean, you walk in the building knowing you can fix something, you can fix whatever's wrong, uh, or you can keep getting better and still be, you know, at the top of the top of the league, at the top of the the charts. And um, the the confidence and the leadership and the culture, everything that, that's in place here is to, is to, is set up for us to win another Super Bowl. And as long as we just keep that that, that fighting mentality, that, that grit that we had last year, uh, that we got right now, man, it's uh, it's fun. So whenever you guys made that move, that's awesome, by the way. I don't want to act like that didn't just wasn't a really cool answer. <laughs> that was a cool answer, okay? Great answer there, dude. I want to let you know it was a great answer. Really good answer there. And um, something I never experienced because Drew Brees and his stupid baby beat us in the Super Bowl or whatever my rookie year. Uh, Troy Palomalu. I mean, there's a few. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, oh. See, thanks. Okay, thanks. Uh, by, by the way, I, I, I'm wearing the Bearcats just to kind of reference. I don't know if you uh, if you remember the 2008 uh, West Virginia okay. Cincinnati Bearcats game. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It was about this close yeah. from being the worst game of my life yeah. to you know what I mean, just a fantastic finish. <laughs> yeah, Pat McAfee r- rallying the Mountaineers oh, into God. OT Dude. and then kicks what could be the game-winning field goal. Yeah, yeah. in OT. Yeah, I did. 
Yeah. And then Tony Pike and the boys, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Pike and the boys just came came through yeah. like Cincinnati Bearcats do. And the old Big East, man. Yeah. You got to love the Big East, man. Shout out to the old school Big East. Some of the best football you've ever seen, man. I agree. By the way, like four straight BCS wins back in the day. The Big East back in the day was humming. We had Louisville, Cincy, us, obviously. Uh, Rutgers back in the day had a team Rutgers, whenever, yeah. whenever they were running. I mean, we had a real run there in that game you could have just gave it to me because you know the year before that i missed those kicks against Pitt. that night was like a big east championship game basically oh, yeah. i hit an onside kick we get it 52 yarders send it to overtime 40 I've some yarder seen, oh my god jeez i've never seen fans i mean you guys were down 20 with like four minutes left yeah i've never seen fans leave the building and come flying back in the stadium <laughs> and it was it was like it was empty for the entire fourth quarter and then with two minutes left that thing was packed to the T all over again. Yeah. It was like they said, oh, I don't care if you got a ticket. Just get back in here. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was off the wall. When you hit that that uh, the field goal to, to take it into OT, I was sitting in the stands. I had a broken foot. I was there with my family just trying to enjoy my brother playing football. I got hit with about four beer cans. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in college, in college, the family sections are all, they're all right together. So Cincinnati, there's that one little side yeah. kind of corner by the tunnel in the corner. Yeah. Cincinnati fans, it's all family. Like the, Nobody else is really traveling the to West Virginia in college. So it's just like the entire family's just getting showered <laughs> as this game's going into OT. And I was like, I've always had an appreciation for West Virginia fans, though, man. I was I was once trying to be a Mountaineer, actually, for Bobby Huggins and the boys, yeah? Ooh. Oh, for wow. hoops? I forgot how good you were yeah. at basketball. I forgot you were like a stud basketball player. I wouldn't say stud. I couldn't dribble to save my life, but I could I could put up points. <laughs> I, could put up, I could take you in the post and, and go to work. No handles. Um, no handles at all. No, I mean very little. Very, I mean, there was, if I if I if I got a rebound, I was trying to push the fast break every time, and about one out of every five pushes, it would go off my knee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kick you know right what I mean, turnover back. city. But uh, I, yeah, I, I found my way on the field pretty quick. Well, that. I think you made the right decision. Hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> wow, hey, that is a lot. But the um, I picked the Cincinnati Bearcats to be in the college football playoff this year on College Game Day. I have them going. I heard that. I heard. I got me fired up too. And I tell you what, getting inside the top ten, ranked seventh in the AP polls right now, and then just I'm, smacking I'm SMU. Right and then they just smacked SMU this past weekend, which was supposed to be a big time. Like Fickle's got a squad. They got like a squad over there. I'll tell you what. It's back. It's back to the days that uh, that we were running the Big East. I hate to throw that at you like yeah, that. Yeah, fuck you. Um, but it was. <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's fun to just see. You know. You know what what good football is when you see guys flying around, having fun, chest bumping, ringing ringing the bells on the sidelines, doing the yeah. the interception dunks yeah. and everything. You know what I mean? You just see guys enjoying themselves in college football. You know what teams are gonna have the juice and which teams don't, man. And right now, Fickle's got the guys playing their tail off, man, and it's fun to watch. I agree completely. Let's talk about your team here while we have a couple minutes left. I appreciate it. Whenever you guys make that move from Alex Smith to Patrick Mahomes outside the locker room, it was wild. It was like Alex Smith just had like an MVP-like season. He was going. It was Andy Reid's – everybody knows Andy Reid's playbook is so big. Alex Smith is probably only going to get better in that playbook. Send him out. Okay, see you later. Not coming back. You're going to Washington, and now it's Patrick Mahomes' team. What he has been able to accomplish in such a short time is stupid. And he said on LeBron James's uh, barbershop show that he uh, he didn't start learning what, how to read a defense until like halfway through last season or something like that. <laughs> With all the offenses that you say, you like all the route concepts and how everything has to go, and now he's learning defense. Like, what is it about him in between the years that just makes him the guy? I mean, obviously he can make every throw, but in between the years, it seems like he's the guy. Yeah, and that, honest, honestly, that's where he separates himself is the confidence. I mean, his arm is second to none. Uh, I think him and Aaron Rodgers are probably the two that can sling it the best in the league, just uh, anywhere on the field from whether it's back foot, you know, across the, whatever throw you need, those two can make it. Uh, but what separates Pat is his is his mentality, man. Uh, as soon as the game's over on Sunday, he, he's in the building Monday. I just saw him two seconds ago walking around trying to get better. Um what he does in terms of preparation, uh, we you talked about it. You touched on uh, how he said he didn't know how to how to read defenses. I think it's uh, I think it was a little bit exaggerated. I mean, I'm pretty sure he could look at the film and see whether it was a two high safety or one high safety and go from there. But I think it's more so uh, being confident in what he's seeing. And, and what that is is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of it's a lot of repetition. It's a lot of film watching. Uh, being confident in what you're seeing out there on the field so you can make the right instinctual decisions because you don't got a whole lot of time to think back there as a quarterback once the ball snapped you got to start making instinctual decisions 
And uh, his instincts, I mean, you want to talk about some of the best the game has ever seen in terms of throwing the ball. Uh, I, I'm going to say it right now. He's the best in the game at doing that. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, tomorrow morning, there's going to be a lot of sports talk shows <laughs> that go. Travis Kelsey says that Patrick Mahomes is the best instinctive quarterback in the NFL. Do you agree or disagree? Well, I disagree with that <laughs> motherfucker. And then the other one, I completely agree with him. That's classic TV. What do you got, Bill? Uh, Mr. Kelsey, uh, you are technically, and I think everybody can agree, the best tight end of the game. And yesterday was National Tight End Day. So my question for you is, oh, did Patrick yeah. Mahomes get yeah. you like a car or a jet ski because he just got half a billion dollars or yeah. what? Yeah, what Good was question. the gift? For I'll tight end what, day, he got me. He got me the best gift you can give a tight end on National Tight End Day, and that's a fucking W. Yeah! 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 <laughs> it's, no, I, it, 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 it's the best, man. I, I, I just say shout out to George Kittle because when he started the National Tight End Day, I did not think he was going to run like this, and they <laughs> turned it into literally a national holiday <laughs> because it, we were all tight ends all over the league. We're all over the the internet, all over social media, catching touchdowns. Uh, getting praised and uh, you know I think it's just awesome for the position uh, knowing that we've always kind of been that that secondary you know position whether it's getting paid or getting the recognition uh, the tight end group has always just been the you know let's just be the utility guys if you need us we're here for you to make it right um, and it's cool to see us finally starting to get a little love. Travis the tight end position I would assume seven years ago was nowhere near valued what it is now. It was probably like a couple, you have a blocking tight end and then you have a pass catching tight end. Now it's become this hybrid position where it's, you're, you're damn near a wide receiver some games. And then obviously you're in there throwing your body. At what point did you realize like, okay, the tight end's about to become one of the most valuable positions in football. Like, did you see it coming as the game was changing a little bit? It was, uh, it was one year, man. It was 2011. You had the the Jimmy Graham and the the Rob Gronkowski. They were just going back and forth every single week of just breaking each other's records. Um, both had over a thousand yards and like I think over ten touchdowns. And that's when it really it really took off because you had these huge physical specimens just running through, running over, jumping over defenses, catching the ball, and it became such a such an unbelievable weapon that everybody was talking about. It. Everybody was raving about it. And um, from that point on, I think the tight end position just been used completely different. I think the athletes have always been there. You look at Kellen Winslow Sr. Um, he was an unbelievable athlete back in the day. Um, guy like Shannon Sharp, Tony Gonzalez, those guys were unbelievable athletes. I don't think the athlete has changed much. I just think the, the accountability and how much we're being used more in the offense uh, has gone up. And, you know, that's uh, in my position. That shout out to Coach Andy Reid. Uh, for dialing up, dialing up the plays for me, but um, I think it's, uh, it's it just keeps going from here, and uh, it's such a it's such a unique position because you got size and speed. Uh, it's like being that that dual forward. You can if if you're a power forward, you're not quite a a power forward. You're not quite a wing forward in basketball. You're just that guy that if the guy's bigger than you, you can take him out to the wing. If he's smaller, you can take him down to the post. But you always have an advantage, and uh, you know that's what I love about being in the position. Well. You do it really well, man. <laughs> you know, you're, you're really, really good. I love it, man. I yeah. love it. Hundred million dollars, dude. You gotta be kidding me. Playing man. football, bro. Wow. Playing football, dude. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty. It's for, very fortunate. Very fortunate. And you know what? You know, I have uh, who I have to thank is um, Mick Cronin. You know, who Mick Cronin is a, he's a college basketball coach for UCLA now, but he was a college basketball coach at Cincinnati. Kind of a little coach. head. Oh, yeah. yeah uh-huh. Kind of has like a little head, right? If I'm thinking yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. Fire, fiery guy, man. Yeah. <laughs> fiery guy. Uh, yeah, he told me I tried to play basketball my senior year. Um, after after my senior year of football happened and the draft was coming around, I was like, man, I, I just don't want to live down playing in the Big East and possibly playing in Madison Square Garden in the Big East tournament, man. I just don't want that to pass me by and have regrets of it. And he looked at me and said, no, you're about to go – you're about to go make millions in the NFL. I'm not. There's no way I'm letting you play for, play basketball. <laughs> and I, I still hate him to today because I uh, I ended up going to the Kansas City Chiefs that year, and I don't know if it would have been the same if I would have played. All right, here's the deal. You run out Madison Square Garden. We'll get our five. You get your five. You fucking play basketball. Oh, in there. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Come true, baby. Hey, la- <laughs> ladies and ladies and gentlemen. One day after National Tight End Day, tight end of the day for us. From the Kansas City Chiefs in the University of Cincinnati, Bearcat, Travis Kelsey. Thank you. Let's go, Big Kelsey. Fellas, anytime, man. Appreciate you, man. We'll talk to you again. Good luck. You know it. You know it. Thank you. Good dude. Mm -hmm. Good Good legend.
That's our first real conversation. Like we've had conversations on field, dap up, how's it going? Fanny, follow you, follow, appreciate you, that type mm-hmm. of thing, interaction. Then Monday Night Football, whenever they played the Rams uh, in L.A., oh, yeah. Yeah. I was there like the greatest Monday Night Football game of all time. Mm-hmm. I was walking around the field or whatever. He caught a pass like right in front of me. He had some um, some feathers in his cleats or something. I, they were awesome looking or whatever. And I looked, I was like, those cleats are awesome. And he said something about, he referenced something in my life that I had just done. I'm like, oh my God. He was like, yeah, yeah, how are you? We had a full embrace on the sideline. This was right in front of like 10 ESPN executives or whatever. There's a bunch of people all around there. And then he just leaves or whatever. I was like, God damn. These people have to be so confused why this guy with a sleeveless hoodie on over here <laughs> is just getting all these conversations. But he's been very nice to me, always has been. And that conversation with him was awesome. I'm a big fan of Travis Kelsey. Yeah. He's very good at the football. I had no game. idea he was also very good at the basketball, aside from dribbling. Well, he can't dribble for shit, yeah, but yeah. the guy can play basketball or whatever. Post moves.